Kingdom Hearts, 100% beginner mode speed run. Kingdom Hearts 2, I suppose. Uh, segment 1, Part 2. If you haven't seen Part 1 yet, go and watch it, or else you'll be very confused. Now it's time to take on Vivi. I'm not particularly good at Vivi. I did save some time on him, which is quite unexpected for me. And if he hadn't done one of those annoying, every time I hit him, he picks up one of those balls again things, then I would have beaten him with much more time saved. But I still saved time on him, which was quite surprising. Um, I find that Vivi is a much more difficult opponent than Hainer. I'm not really sure why that is. I think that Hainer is a much more active character. I don't know. Um, and he sort of decides when he's going to attack. Meanwhile, Vivi, you decide when he's going to attack. You know, you attack Vivi, and then you have to react to his counterattacks. Meanwhile, Hainer, you have to counterattack to him. And I guess that's just more difficult for me for some reason. But um, Vivi also has a much shorter life bar. So as you can see here, I've already killed him, which is nice. And then he gets back up. And you can see here, I actually you know, get him down to very low, and there's still like 15 seconds left. But it gets to one of those things where, like, he just jumped and picked up another ball. Um, but I managed to get him here and save, like, I guess, yeah, like 640. So that's not too bad, and certainly good enough to move on. Uh, we've got a Dusk Battle coming up, and then Axel 1, Axel 1 went brilliantly. Dusk Battle, I don't honestly remember. I'm sure it was fine. <sighs> I did this segment so many times. This is a really boring segment. I'm not sure if any of the entire rest of the speedrun will have a segment this long. Um, the last segment might be. I don't exactly know how long the final boss is. But 30 minutes is probably a fair estimate for them. And I think this segment's time is like 29.58 or something. <laughs> Pretty much whenever I load this save, even if I immediately press start to look at the timer, it's already 30. So 29 and a big number of seconds is this segment done. Um, but that dust battle actually went pretty well. And then this is what I found to be the best routine for Axel. Um, he's a very difficult opponent. You have to time your attacks on him. You, you can't just button mash your way through this one and expect to do well. Um, like you see here, this air combo is incredibly easy to miss with. You have to get that first hit out before his first lunge and then get the second hit out, um, yeah, I mean, see, he's already beaten. Get the second hit out once he's taken the second step, so that your big swing finisher will still hit him. And then, like you saw there, I had to use a ground combo, and then immediately launch into an air combo, so that my finisher would stagger him before he could use his little invincibility state. And now I get to fight Setzer. I'm using a really, really, you know, very unique, very interesting strategy for Setzer. Um, I call it the jump into the air and spin like an idiot plan because I find that this is generally the best way to beat him, and uh, the spinning like an idiot strategy is, is very difficult to perform effectively. I do pretty well, except for the time when I intentionally get hit. He only hits me like twice, I think. Um, and you can see I, I go ahead and launch into it here. And it's all about timing the manner that you spin and how high you jump and the direction of your jump. And like that was an accidental hit. That was an honest mistake. But that was a, just a great dodge there. So you see it all kind of evens out. Um, so yeah, if you ever want to dodge Setzer's attack, I find that jumping into the air spin like an idiot is pretty effective as far as tactics go. You have to keep him in your vision there, though. That was just a lucky dodge that he didn't hit me. And <laughs> Setzer is very womanly. I'm not really sure why they insisted on making him so girlish, and yet also such a fangirl, hot guy. I think there's a technical name for them, but I forget it. Um... But he seems to have quite a lot of fangirls. Unfortunately, they all look identical, and there's like six of them just sort of spread randomly throughout the crowd. But it's better than the six little identical boys in the blue shirts, or the six little identical moms. <sighs> I don't think it really would have taken them all that much more processing power to put in a few more character models, but, you know, I'm not a game designer, I don't know. Um, but then, yeah, little old womanly Setzer gets his victory. I don't really care. And it's off to do the seven amazingly boring wonders of Twilight Town. After skipping a cutscene where Roxas is falling from the sky for no reason. Yeah. I find that Kingdom Hearts, as a series, usually relies upon just, you know, a general feeling of why things make sense. They never really explain anything. 
They just say, like, you know, this feels right. We're not going to explain why the organization can summon darkness portals, which is identical to Maleficent's darkness portal, even though the two are... Not, not only are they not affiliated, but they're enemies. We're not going to explain it. It just sort of feels right that the organization can do that. And personally, it bothers me. I don't think most people have any trouble with it. Um, but here I am to go activate the wall after doing some menu stuff. I'm not particularly good at menu stuff either, but I don't lose all that much time on it just because I don't have to do it very often. Um, for a while, I toyed with the thought of putting guard on instead of aerial recovery, but... And especially in these early segments, pretty much your only goal is to put out as much damage as possible. And if you're guarding, you're not doing any damage. I will use guard later on, because it's an amazingly useful ability. But while I only have 2 AP for now, I think I'm going to go with aerial cover. Um, and I have actually messed up perfectly good segments by getting hit by the balls here, but this time I sort of sketchily dodged through them. Like here, you can see I almost got hit, but I made it. And uh, besides that, and BV, I don't really mess up the bag, or Shadow Roxas. They're both pretty easy for me. Actually, I'm trying to f figure out, or I, I did try to figure out throughout the course of my segments, if the pattern that the bag ran around in mattered at all. And I think it actually does matter. I think that you want as few jumps as possible, because it seems like the timer runs out more when it's just running around in circles, especially towards the end. Early on, jumping might be faster, but towards the end, you want it to just run, and that's what, sort of what happened this time, so I guess it's legit. And here is the multiple VVs. This is really awesome. Um, I really have no explanation for how I got this amazing luck. And, I mean, like, you see, even when I swing and there's nothing there, like, it's, you know, it's a blatant miss. VVs just appear in front of my bat, and now they're all already dead. Um, I guess it, it, you know, it's just entirely luck, but um, I was certainly very happy when that happened. And you can tell because my skateboarding here goes all squirrely because I'm shaking. Uh, man. I If you've been reading the thread, you've already seen this, but this segment doesn't actually have any audio. Um, in the future, I might let the audio play a little bit and just talk over it, but I, I don't know. I'll probably just cut it out completely. But this segment doesn't even have audio because um, I had my DVD recorder hooked up to record AV2, which was my PS3, because most of the content that I record is you know, PS3. Um, and the hilarious irony is that 37 attempts before I got this, my 38th attempt, um, I was recording AV1, i.e. every single one of my recorded titles was a black screen. Um, I never watched any of them because none of them were keepable segments. I just deleted them. So I, I dutifully went through and deleted the black screens every single time. And only immediately before this attempt did I realize that black screens meant it wasn't recording. Um, and then I changed the video, and I also, just to make it even more ironic, I forgot to change the audio. So not only was this the first segment that I actually was recording for, and also an amazingly lucky segment, um, but, but there's no audio. But thankfully, SDA has decided to be merciful and uh, allow me to go ahead and use this as my first segment, so long as the rest of the run has audio, which is amazing. I would really hate to have to redo this. Um, I'm not good enough at the struggle, or at VV, or at even the Axel battles, to get this sort of segment very regularly. I mean, this is a solid 30 seconds faster than anything else I'd gotten up to this point. Um, yeah, and then here's the bag. You can see that I have quite a bit of running involved in it, and very little jumping. Which, as I said earlier, I think is good. I don't really know. I don't think it makes a big difference. Ah, these seven wonders confuse me. It's like, I think they're just trying to show you that the game has a lot of different facets and that, like, you know, there's some combat-based stuff and there's, like, a puzzle and there's, like, a jumping challenge and then there's just mashing triangle, which is, I think, what everyone does during the bag section. I don't know anyone that actually waits for it to a little appear. I just go ahead and mash it. But I don't really think they needed to put in all these wonders. I think it's just kind of an unnecessary lengthening of the Roxas area. Which isn't that bad, because Roxas is definitely my favorite Sandwich Master as far as it goes. I mean, Sora's, in his new outfit, he's better. In the, the old red one, he's pretty pretty bad, actually. But, you know, he's a little bit better now, and the drive forms are cool. And then Riku's just confusing and broody. Which... I guess that's what they're going for with his character, so. 
No major complaints. Um, and then there's King Mickey, which I don't even know what's up with that. They never really explain why, you know, at first they say that there's only one Keyblade Master, and then by the end of the series there's four, and then if you count, like, Birth by Sleep and all the other ones that are coming out, which admittedly I know very little about, um, I think there's up to, like, you know, a million Keyblade Masters, approximately. As far as I can ballpark it, it's somewhere in between, like, nine and a million. So I've just given up on understanding the story. <laughs> Um, which is fine since I skip cutscenes anyway. And I'm guessing this is probably where I'll want to end part two, so just return for part three and the end of this whole thing.